Hey guys, how we doing? Welcome to another episode of the Mindset Hacker Podcast with your host, the Mindset Hacker, Jazz Vinder, Jazz for short. And we're listening to the late, great Mary Lee Williams on piano. What a mind. Someone you gotta look up on Google if you don't know her. Or if you do, get back into her music. How about that? So today we got a we got an interesting program here that I think you will appreciate very much. This is five ways to get more me time. So I don't think I need to really explain why me time is so important. It's the one thing we all complain about not having enough of. And I mean, if you have a job, if you have kids, if you have a significant other in your life, I always thought that was a very clinical thing to say. If you've got a girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, or wife, how about that? If you got friends at all, if you got anything going on, then you know this world has a way of just eating up your time. Everything you do seems to have everything you do that you spend time doing. I don't know what you can do that you don't spend time doing. Has a way of just tricking you into doing even more of it, with or without your consent. So we need to recharge. We need to have a healthy level of solitude in our lives. We need time to digest emotionally, intellectually. We need our bodies to rest. We need me time going on. So a lot of this talk is going to really be, well, almost like a time management talk, actually, because this isn't really about what to do during your me me time. This isn't about so much how to nurture yourself or you know what to eat that's nurturing or how to wind down in the evenings we can we can talk about that later there's lots of great information out there about that of course i might post something on that theme myself in the near future but before you ha- before you start to pile on these ideas of what to do to be more nurturing and gentle with yourself if you don't know how to structure your day to get the time to do that in the first place, then these these ideas of how to spend your me time, your alone time, your time for self-care and nurturing can easily just turn into one more thing that's adding a, another burden on your shoulders, another thing you're scrambling to do. I have seen people scramble and just lose their shit over the the stress of their of trying to get in their me time well something is just fundamentally wrong <laughs> if that's your reality and i've been there i've seen other people get there to you know to some degree or another some people have really become neurotic about it and other people are just sort of ignoring it either way that's not good so easiest way to fix this is with a which is five simple time management hacks okay so the first way to get more me time more alone time for you drum roll is you schedule it you schedule your downtime schedule it make it a commitment to yourself now how do you keep that commitment from being compromised you got to schedule all the things that would interrupt it. All the reasons you can't take that time for yourself. Schedule those things. Because what happens is you get to the end of your day at work, at your job, and probably you decompress or you rush around to take care of some errands or you just, you just immediately launch into some other stuff that seems urgent, it seems important, It may be neither. And the more you do, the more you realize there is to do. The more you do, the more that seems to be left undone. And then you kind of just vegetate, check out, burn out, crash out. That's no way to do it. So all the reasons why, and you know what these reasons are. I don't need to run through a laundry list, but as I'm saying this, It's coming up in your head right now. If this need for more me time and more self-care, more healthy solitude in your life is hitting you as, yeah, I need that. I really do need that. Especially if you're a single parent or something, this is major. So you already know what these things are 
you already know all the reasons why you just can't get that time for yourself. And it would probably take you 15 seconds of thought or less to, to get clarity on what those are if you don't already see them in front of your face like a laundry list in a red Sharpie. So schedule those things. Schedule them. Live by your calendar. Not in some obsessive kind of way, but if, if, you're, if it's not happening for you, then you've got to make the time. Because guess what? You're not finding the time, are you? You've got to make the time. So I just I live by the calendar of my smartphone. Anything I need to do, it's in there. If it's not in there, don't expect me to do it. So that's on me to put it in there, of course, but that's, that's the reality. Schedule everything that interrupts your alone time. That's number two. Number three is don't overschedule your days off. Don't overschedule your weekends. Actually, take at least one weekend a month to do nothing at all. I would say every other weekend. Just have nothing scheduled as much as you can. Sometimes that's not, that's not possible, but there are fixed commitments some of us have already. But outside of those, try to, try to have at least two weekends a month or at least one day, two to three weekends a month, where there's nothing on your schedule. Once a month, once a month, just take one weekend and do nothing. Be by yourself as much as you can. You know, don't give your don't give your spouse or your boyfriend girlfriend the the blow off or the cold shoulder. But I think you know how to adjust this to your life. Everything I'm saying is meant to be applied with a standard of reasonable, reasonability, reasonableness. <laughs> so it, should be, it should be reasonable. And I should speak proper English. Don't overschedule your days off. Don't just cram your weekends full of, you know, party time or trips or activities, all the things you want to do. Don't just treat your weekends as blowing off steam from your week. If, if your week makes you want to do nothing but blow off steam... We need to reevaluate your whole professional world, actually, and maybe some other things. So there's another thing we'll get into later, which is don't pigeon your don't don't pencil yourself in or don't paint yourself into a corner in the sense of a life that you only want to escape from. Now that's, that's a more long-term project if that's your deal. But just start by treating your your weekends as breathing room. Not this work hard, party hard thing, which is cool. I do that sometimes. You can do that too. But build in some mechanisms. Take your whole day. Uh, take, your, take one full weekend a month and let's say, you know, one, just one day, maybe two weekends a month outside of that. And just have those be blank days. Schedule in the whole day, all, the all, an all day event as a me time day or weekend. Number four, replace the constant drip, drip of texting with scheduled meetups. So one of the reasons why your downtime isn't real downtime is because you're just probably over responsive to text messages that are coming in out after work. If that's your, if that's the case for you, then I would see what happens if you just respond to those with, Hey, you know, I'm kind of, say whatever you want to say. I'm taking, I'm just having some downtime right now, but why don't we catch up? Why don't we catch up next weekend? Why don't we, why don't we grab a, a happy hour after work sometime next week? Why don't we meet for lunch? Why don't we grab a coffee? Why don't we have dinner? You know, your place, my place, wherever, right? But respond to people that way. Make, first of all, make time to really see people, sit down with them, spend time, be in their presence. Give them your full attention because we all fall into this thing of just text, 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 text. And we don't really spend enough good time with each other. You know, I'll tell you something. Some of my closest friendships, you know, there are people who I have actually great friendships with that are largely over electronic communication. But then, you know, then there's some friends of mine who we don't really text that much. Not really. And then out of nowhere, I'll get a phone call like, hey, I'm going to be in town. Or... You know, I'm coming up to some place near your area. Um, why don't we hang out? And that's fantastic. It's great. I love how it's not just this constant drip, drip, drip of pleasant, humorous, but maybe ultimately 
uh, un, just meaningless communication, not substantial. Spend time with people and deprioritize the texting. So that's number four. So let's review what we got here. We got number one, schedule your downtime. Number two, schedule the things that interrupt your downtime. Number three, don't over schedule your days off or your weekends. Number four, replace the constant drip of texting with scheduled time with those people. It'll be a lot more meaningful. Now, last one here, number five, you know, make time. This is just really not a big deal here. Make time for walks and self development. Clear your head, get out of the house. Clear your head, so important. When you wake up in the morning, before you get into routines and getting ready for work and even before showering, if you meditate in the morning, that's great. That's awesome. Not everybody meditates. I'm not trying to convert everyone into a bunch of meditators. You know, last thing I need is I go into a In-N-Out burger and all I'm seeing is kale and spirulina because I got all you buggers on meditating. Okay. I don't need that in my life. (laughs) All right. I need a little healthy Thomas Rajas in my life. Just drop some Sanskrit on you real quick. I, don't, I, I need some good, wholesome, just unwholesomeness in my life. All right? So when you wake up in the morning, just walk outside. When it's still dark in the early morning, just get up and walk outside. Before everyone else is running around, you know, packing their kids into the car, packing the gremlins into the PT cruisers, just get outside, walk around, walk around the block. Listen to birds in the trees. Listen to the leaves rustling in the wind. Listen to just these far off sounds of cars in the distance. Look up at the sky. Watch the sunrise. Make time for yourself. Make time to just be with yourself or be in your environment. Make time that is not just dominated by some kind of agenda. And make time for self development. Make time for self development, meaning. I mean, hey, these podcasts are great, right? <laughs> you could always make, you could just, you could listen to those. But this, I mean, look, there's tons of, you're already listening to my podcast. I'm not going to tell you to listen to it. But there's tons of great stuff out there. You know, you've got your, you listen to something by Alan Watts. Listen to something by Dr. Wayne Dyer. Listen to something by, I mean, do something to expand your mind. I went through a whole thing of listening to audiobooks by some pretty serious scientist type people. It didn't fry my brain, you know, like your Richard Dawkins or, you know, Lawrence, a Dr. Lawrence Krauss, or he's not a scientist, but someone like Christopher Hitchens. Interesting ideas, people who are extremely well-spoken. I I think people who have a sense of wonder for the universe and for reality as a scientist, it can fill your mind with a childlike curiosity. Listen to music. Watch movies by yourself on Hulu, Netflix, whatever. Doing things by yourself is not lonely and lame. (laughs) Giving yourself time with yourself is awesome. And it shows a tremendous self-respect. And that you don't need other people to make your life what it is. When you're with other people, you should be just giving and enjoying. Not giving like you're serving them, like it's something transactional. But just enjoy it. Don't look for other people to replace what you can only give to yourself from within yourself, which is something that we talk about a lot on this podcast. Make time for walking. Make time to be by yourself. Make time for self-development. Make time for new, interesting ideas. Honor your curiosity. Honor your mind's need for nourishment and for growth. Because the agenda life has locked you into is not going to present you with those opportunities. Well, guys, my name is Jazz Vinder. This has been the Mindset Hacker Podcast. Thank you for your time, and we shall talk again soon.